We hope you enjoyed our show today. Your stories are finished and all put away. But we'll come again another day. The stories you've seen through music and mind can be written by you if you just take the time. So get out a pen and paper. You'll see. The, the adventures, adventures and magic, magic that writing sets free. Oh, we really had some great stories today. And we had a lot of fun acting them out. But we're going to need a lot more for the months to come. You can write alone or with somebody else. Write about anything you want. So just take those words inside your head and put them down on a piece of paper and send them in to us as soon as you can. Who knows, you might even see your stories come to life. So, right away. away! This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our program, call the Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 for more information. Pick up a paper and pen right away don't know just how to begin right away just let the ideas flow right away don't worry about where they'll go right away let's have some fun now we've begun just keep on riding cause it's so exciting right away Up a paper and pen right away. Don't know just how to begin right away. Just let the ideas flow right away. Don't worry about where they'll go right away. Let's have some fun. Now we've begun, just keep on riding cause it's so exciting right away, right away, right away. Come on, come out Jeannie. Sabrina, what's wrong? I've been rubbing and rubbing this lamp and it just doesn't work. I guess there's no such thing as magic lamps. Well, this lamp might not be magic, but as an author, you can create magic anytime you want, just by using your imagination. Just look at what magic our second grade author, Deanna Downs from Town Point School, created in her story called The Magic Umbrella. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who wanted a magic umbrella. If only I had a magic umbrella, then I could fly anywhere in the whole wide world. Mom and Dad, may I please have a magic umbrella? A magic umbrella? Yeah. See, if I had a magic umbrella, then I could fly anywhere in the whole wide world. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the store and get one. So the little girl's parents took her to the store. At the store, she saw all sorts of umbrellas, and she liked them all very much. Mom! Mom! May I have one of these? Oh, these are much too expensive. If you want one, you'll have to earn the money yourself. I will earn the money. So every day after school, the little girl would help people and earn money. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for washing my dog and mowing my lawn. It looks fabulous. Here's your money. <gasps> Nine, ten. Yes! Now I have enough money to buy my new magic umbrella. So the little girl went back to the store to buy her magic umbrella. Hi, which one would you like? Well, I want a magical umbrella. Oh, well, they're all magical. Oh, I'll take that one. <laughs> ten dollars. <laughs> She took it home, and every night when the moon was high, she would fly around the world. Look! Mom and Dad! I'm flying! <laughs> yeah.
Have you ever sat in class when the teacher says, all right, class, let's clean out our desks. Does it make you shudder? Because you don't know what's in there. Well, fifth grader Jonathan Garcia from Handy Elementary lets us share in his experience in the form of a poem entitled, In My Desk. In my desk is a creepy old thing. In my desk, my cousin lost her ring. In my desk, I'm afraid to take a look. I'm even scared to take out a book. Oh, in my desk, I think something is in there. Because there's lots and lots of hair. In my desk, there's too much stuff. To get out a pencil is really, really rough. All right, class, it's time to take out your pencils. <laughs> And my desk, the end. Wow. Joe, what are you doing? You're making a mess. Well, I've been trying to write a story, but I just don't know what to write about. Well, one way to get started with a story is to write about something or someone you already know. Something or someone I already know. Hey, I know I'll write about me. Once upon a time, there was a handsome young boy named Joe. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> you see, sometimes it is easier when you write about someone you know. And that's exactly what a group of second graders did. They're from Mrs. Brosda's class at King's Elementary, and they wrote about a very special small person that they all know named Baby Nathan. Hi. In our class, we have a very special person, but he's not a student, he's a baby inside Ms. Alcorn, our teacher's aide. She has been pregnant the whole school year. Or so it seems. At first, it was a secret, but then she told the whole class. Class, I have some wonderful news. I'm going to have a baby, and it's going to be a baby boy, and I'm going to name him Nathan. Yeah, and I can't wait to see the world. Hey, more pickles down here. I'm hungry. We were so excited. We all shouted, yay. yay. Then she showed us a picture of Nathan, a sonogram. You see, students? You can see his bones and his head and his arms and his legs. It's a miracle. Well, every day, Ms. Alcorn's stomach got bigger and bigger and bigger. And we would talk to Nathan inside. Hi, Nathan. How you doing? Hey, guy. Got your own swimming pool, huh? <laughs> are you having fun? Are you sucking your thumb? Are you awake or are you asleep? Can you hear us in there? We can't wait to see you for real. Yeah, I could hear you. I could hear you. Hey! More pizza down here! Whew. I think it's time to go to Pizza City. Hello, Hello baby Nathan. Nathan. We love you so much. Aw, oh, shucks. <laughs> then, one day, Miss Alcorn didn't come to school. She had gone to the hospital to have her baby. We all went to see him. And boy, was he cute. It was a miracle, and that's all about baby Nathan. Elise, come over here and sit with me. What? I can't wait to see this next story. Why? What's so special about this one? Well, you know how I love animal stories? Yeah? This one was written by second grader Derek Lawson of Midland School. As a writer, Derek took a normal pet and gave him some special abilities. In his story, Wonder Parrot. Hello, boys and girls. Let me introduce myself to you. Brock, I'm Luigi. 
I'm a bright colored bird. And I live on 66th Street. I'm one smart bird. I can talk and I can even use a telephone, which came in really handy one day. Let me tell you how it all began. It was such a nice day back when my owner, Nick, was playing with his ball. Nick, I'm going to the store. I'll be back in a few minutes. Now stay away from the pool. Okay, Mom. Okay, Mom. Rock. Uh-oh. I better get my ball out of the pool. Stay away from the pool, Nick. Rock. Well, Nick was getting closer and closer to the pool. Watch out, Nick. You're too close. Rock. I can reach it. I can reach it. Uh-oh. Uh Nick was in trouble. I had to do something, so I jumped off my perch. And I flew to the telephone. I knocked out the receiver. And I dialed 911. Hello, emergency operator. How may I help you? Rock, my name is Luigi. My name is Luigi. Rock! Well, Luigi, you know it's against the law to call 911 without an emergency. Rock, stupid operator, stupid operator. Rock! Well, I never. I'm going to send a police officer over there right now to find out who you are. Rock, right away, stupid. Right away, stupid. Rock! Help! Help! Nick! I almost forgot! Help! Help! Suddenly, the police woman arrived. Mark! Uh-oh! Big trouble! Big trouble! You are in big trouble. But then I had a brilliant idea. I pointed my wing out the window. Help! She saw Nick. Then she ran and pulled him out of the pool. Now you were lucky to have such a smart parrot. Now remember, never go near the pool without a parent. Thanks, Luigi. You saved the day. I'm gonna buy you a brand new golden cage. Of course, cause I am Luigi, the Wonder Parrot. Bye! Hi. <laughs> may look like I'm just eating an apple, but I can share this apple with you in words that will help you see how shiny red it is and taste how deliciously sweet it is. These words are known as adjectives, and a wonderful example of this can be seen from sixth grader Emma Corco from Mountain View School in her story entitled The Butterfly Ballet. As I floated in the field of beautiful wildflowers, I could feel the silky green grass between my fingers. I could hear the birds. They were singing in the sky. And as I looked up into the sky, oh, the clouds looked like an ocean. Mmm, and the scent of the wildflowers smelled better than the best perfume in the world. <laughs> oh! There went a butterfly. I go to chase it. <laughs> I can taste the wind on my mouth as I ran. <laughs> and then suddenly, I felt myself change into a butterfly. <laughs> I felt as if I had all the time in the world. Then I caught myself up in the clouds. <laughs> and the clouds felt like big, soft, fluffy pillows. <laughs> I decided to go back down into the wildflowers. <gasps> and there, I tasted the sweet nectar mm, of the wildflowers. But then, suddenly like a snap, I started returning to my body. I felt like, like I didn't belong there. I tried to fly up into the sky. But my feet were caught to the ground, just like the nectar was caught to the tip of my tongue. And then I was no longer sad or hurt because I knew that I could go back to that time any time I wanted to just by shutting my eyes and then I'd be back in the world of happiness, in the world of the butterfly. The Butterfly Ballet, the end.
pick up a paper and pen right away. You know, a lot of stories are written just to entertain us. But I really love stories that teach us lessons. Lessons about how to be better people. And our next story does just that. It's written by fifth grader Zachary Frank of Crescent Intermediate. And it's called Teamwork. Jimmy and Sue were brother and sister. They were the fastest runners in the school. In fact, no one could beat them at running relays. Sue would start and Jimmy would always run anchor. We can't be beat. We're the best. However, one day a new boy moved into the school named Johnny. Can I race with you too? No. Why not? Because we're the best, you know. I mean, there's no one faster. Wait. If you could race me and win, then you can be in the relays with us. But I don't think you can do it, because no one else has. Well, Johnny took the challenge. On your marks, get set, go! He smoked Jimmy in the first hundred meter heat. Wait, you started too soon! Jimmy complained of Johnny jumping the gun. On your marks, get set, go! So they ran it over and got the same results. There was no doubt about it. Johnny was a lot faster than Jimmy. You know, Johnny, you're pretty fast. I have an idea. The international relay race is coming up. Let's join the three-person team relay. Well, that's a good idea, Sue. If you consider running with us, Johnny. Wow, sure! So that's exactly what happened. Sue continued to be the lead. Her brother Jimmy took the second seat. And Johnny, the new boy in school, ran anchor. They took home first place, and they continued to win races. However, they are all well aware that another new child could come to school any day and challenge them for the fastest. They all learned an important lesson. You may be good. Even the best. But there's always someone better. Teamwork! You know, it's a lot of fun when you write a story by yourself. But it can even be more fun when you write with someone else. And that's called a collaboration. Now, a collaboration is when two writers or more get together, put their ideas down on paper, and form a story. And that's exactly what our next two authors did. Kindergartner Annabelle and fourth grader Sarah Berryman. They're from Alps Road School in Athens, Georgia. And they wrote a wonderful story entitled, The Mixed Up Googles. One day, in a kindergarten class, two little girls, Carly and Anna, were playing blocks when they heard a loud sound. It sounded like something landed on the roof. Well, let's go check it out. But before they could even get out the door, two strange-looking creatures walked in. Ah! Hey, don't be afraid. I'm Leamy. And I'm Screamy. We're Google Monsters. And we want to become human. Yeah. Oh, well, we can teach you everything we know about being human. Okay! So, Anna and Carly tried to teach them how to be human. First, they showed them how to tie their shoes. Uh-oh! Next, they showed them how to drink milk. And then, they showed them how to build blocks. Uh -oh. This just isn't working. You're Googles and we're humans. I think you should just be yourselves. But we want to be like humans. We want to be like you. We want to be like you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. They're right. We're Googles. <laughs> we should just be ourselves. 
After all, we're smart and very handsome. <laughs> I think we should all be happy with who we are. Uh, well, it's time to go now. We'll never forget you. Um, instead of being humans, it's better to be friends with humans. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so the monsters left as quickly as they came. And Anna and Carly went back to what they liked doing best, playing and just being themselves. <laughs> Sabrina, those were two of the funniest monsters I've ever seen. They sure were strange. I think it's fun to see how two authors can write about aliens in completely different ways. Third grader Nicholas Allen from Lakeview Elementary wrote about another kind of alien in his story, The Boy That Went Into Space. Let's see what he did. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Victor who loved to watch his father work. That's because his father had a very important job. Wow, Dad. I bet I'm the only boy whose father works in the space shuttle. <laughs> I have a very important job, son. Without me, those spaceships wouldn't fly. Is the toaster fixed yet, Dad? <sighs> Not yet, son. One day, Victor went with his dad to watch him work on a spaceship. Wow, Dad, this is neat. So many dials and buttons. That's right, son. But be very careful. Whatever you do, don't touch that button marked blast off. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll be right back. They're low on that orange drink. Well, I'll just look out this window and... Oh, no! and it took off. He flew and flew until he landed on a planet. Son, don't worry. You'll be all right. And I fixed the toaster. Wow, Dad, that's great. Oh, I decided to explore the planet for life forms. Don't worry, Dad. Victor walked around the planet and got lost. Suddenly, an alien appeared. What? I don't understand you. My name is Victor. I'm from Earth. The alien grabbed Victor and tied him up. Then she began to yell at Victor in Martian. I don't understand you. I'm Victor from Earth. Victor! The Martian got frustrated and walked away. Oh, my chance to escape. Victor began to run, but the Martian saw him and began to chase him everywhere. Victor! <laughs> Suddenly, the Martian pulled out a laser gun and was just about to zap Victor when... Wake up! Oh, don't shoot Victor! Me, don't shoot me. Don't Victor! Shoot me. Oh. You'll be late for school. Oh, Dad, I had the most horrible dream. I was up in space and went, shh, and then the little Martian came out and went, Victor, Victor, and then it was going to shoot me, and then I woke up. There's no such thing as Martians. Oh, thank goodness it was only a nightmare. We hope you enjoyed our show today. Your stories are finished and all put away. But we'll come again another day. The stories you've seen through music and mime can be written by you if you just take the time. So pick up your pencil and paper. You'll see. The adventures and magic that writing sets free. So, right away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our program, call the Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 for more information. Pick up a paper and pen. 
right away Right away Don't know just how to begin Right away Right away Just let the ideas flow Right away Right away Don't worry about where they'll go Right away Right away Let's have some fun Now we began Let's keep our riding Cause it's so exciting Right away flow right away right away don't worry about where they'll go right away right away let's have some fun now we began let's keep on riding cause it's so exciting right away I'd love to go to the library to read books about science fiction and space. I hope someday I'll get to travel in a rocket ship and walk on the moon. And maybe if I ever get to space, I'll have some interesting companions. Just like the ones written by fourth grader Emily Barkelew and kindergartner Alexander Gibney. They go to the Alps Road School in Athens, Georgia. Watch with me their exciting story, The Space Adventure. Once there was a famous astronaut named Skip. He was going to the moon. What he didn't know was that three of his biggest fans had followed him to the spaceship. There was Brett the Lion. I can't wait to get his autograph. <laughs> and Maddie the Tiger. I'm going to take his picture. <laughs> and a cheetah named Emily. I just want to touch him. <laughs> All of a sudden, the animals heard Skip say, Mission Control, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Finally, the spaceship landed. Mission Control, I'm now going to take a walk on the moon. So exciting! <laughs> the animals followed Skip until he heard footsteps behind him. I hear something behind me. But that's no problem though because I'm astronaut Skip. Ah! <laughs> The astronaut ran back to the spaceship and blasted off, leaving the three animals behind. Mission Control, it was awful. There's creatures attacking me from all sides. I think I'll write a book about it and make lots of money. As for the three animals... I didn't get his autograph. I forgot to turn the flash off. <laughs> Let's not worry about that now. We're stranded. Suddenly, they met an alien, a friendly alien, who adopted them and they spent the rest of their lives on the moon. And they were always happy. Potato? Tomato. Clock. Block. What are you doing? Oh, I'm writing a poem. A poem? Yeah, all you have to do is rhyme, right? Well, rhyming is part of it, but a poem can also be a story about something you like, oh. or maybe about something you don't like. 
That's what fifth grader Stephanie Centel from McGaw Elementary did. It's entitled, I Hate Fall. I hate falling when I'm running a race, because when I fall, I fall on my face! I hate it when a brick falls. Oh, no! Especially when it lands on my toe. Sorry. Then I mumble and grumble and say words I shouldn't. Ah, ah, ah. Because it isn't okay. I hate it when leaves fall to the ground. I'm just glad they don't weigh a pound. I hate fall. The end. And now, welcome to another spine-tingling Tales from the Script. Welcome, and I'm glad you're here for another scary story. One of the scariest things is a monster. <laughs> What's even scarier is when you put yourself in a story with the monster. And that's exactly what Jean Lowry did, a second grader from Midland Elementary, in her deliciously scary tale entitled, The Monster That Jean Scared. <laughs> Sounds exciting. <laughs> One day, three friends, Amanda, like, hi, Jean, hi, and Jenny, hi, were walking down the street when all of a sudden a monster popped up from behind a rock. I'll take you and away we'll go. The monster kidnapped Amanda. What do you think, Amanda? Amanda? They saw that Amanda was gone. They looked everywhere for her. She's gone! I think Amanda's been kidnapped. And look, there are two sets of footprints. One going like this, and the other one like this. Cool! How do you do that? Well, you put one hand here, huh? and you... Oh, we don't have time for this. Look, these are leading right up to that spooky castle. I have an idea. Let's find Amanda and rescue her. Okay. And here's me at prom, alone. <laughs> oh, the tea's ready. I'll be back. There she is. Well, let's rescue her and go. But just as they were about to rescue her... <laughs> so, you thought you'd try and save your little friend. <laughs> well, now I've got the three of you. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, yeah? Well, you don't scare me. <laughs> Why don't you just go away? <laughs> and while you're at it, take a bath. Do something about that breath. Yeah. Clean up this place. It's disgusting. You're disgusting. Everything's disgusting. <laughs> Jean was so brave that she scared the monster off. Oh. Like, you saved us all, and you know what? 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 Like, it's my birthday. Oh. <laughs> The three girls went home and had cake and ice cream and partied away. Like for sure! Ooh, 
<laughs> a cake and ice cream party. Ooh, like for sure. Now that sounds scary. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to more tales of terror and suspense from all you authors out there to be presented on our next Tales from the Script. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. You add one cup of sugar and mix thoroughly. Hey, Elise, you know, you're reading a very important form of writing. What are you talking about, Sabrina? All I'm doing are, is reading the instructions on how to make cupcakes. Well, if a writer a long time ago had not taken the time to write down how to make cupcakes, then you wouldn't know how, and we wouldn't have dessert. In fact, we might not know how to do a lot of things, like building a plane or working a computer. That's what second grader John Knight from Town Point Elementary did in his story, How to Brush Your Teeth. First you get your toothbrush. First you get your toothbrush. Then you get your toothpaste. Then you get your toothpaste. Then you wet your toothbrush. Then you wet your toothbrush. Then you brush your teeth. Then you brush your teeth. Then you get a cup. Then you get a cup. Then you get some water. Then you get some water. Then you spit it out. <laughs> then you wipe your mouth. Then you wipe your mouth. And then you're done. How to brush your teeth. The end. An exciting thing about writing is that you're totally in charge. Now, there's many ways in which you can start a story, and you can decide which way to choose. Now, you might want to start with a narrator telling the story. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Sally. Or you can do like Brittany Cantrell from Independence Elementary School did, where she took her main character, Sally, and let her tell the story of hair. Hi, my name's Sally, and I really hate my hair. So I decided to ask my family what to do. Mom! What should I do with my hair? Cut it short. Dad, what should I do with my hair? Grow bangs. Sis, what should I do with my hair? Get a perm. Hey, brother, what should I do with my hair? Just keep it the same. I couldn't decide, so I decided to ask my neighbors, the Cools. They have really cool taste. Well, here goes nothing. Mrs. Cool, what should I do with my hair? Well, honey, I think you should get some pigtails. I think I'll ask Mr. Cool. Mr. Cool, what should I do with my hair? Red hair. Now that's the trick. Curl it. Curl it big, like this. No, what every young girl needs is a topsy tail. A bun. A topsy tail. A bun. A topsy tail. So I went home and sat in my tree for a long time. I guess my brother was right. I'll keep my hair just the way it is. But now, what am I going to wear? <laughs> what are you two laughing about? This Danny Duck is so funny. The way he always fools Pete Bunny really quacks me up. <laughs> oh, so you guys like stories with personification. Persona what? Personification. See, that's when an author gives human characteristics to things, like animals. That's how Danny Duck can talk and sing. And you should see how our next author uses personification. Clark Munson, a fifth grader from Villa Park Elementary, gives Frasier the dog a very funny personality in Frasier's Big Weekend. Hello, my name is Frasier, and I'm leaving now, Frasier. Be a good boy and take care of the house. <laughs> and that's my owner, and he's finally going on vacation for the weekend. And that means party, party, party. 
So I just do my good dog thing. I just sit here and I wag my tail as I watch him leave. As soon as he gets around the corner, I'm out of my doghouse on the way to the park. I like going to the park. And I love laying in the sand and wiggling. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Hey. Hey. There's Mrs. Salem. She makes the best sandwiches. She puts plenty of turkey on them. They are yummy to my tummy. And she always has a spare one for me. <laughs> oh, Frasier, what a nice dog. Oh, look, it's my good buddies, Lassie and Baby Joe. They're the best. We like to run. Play tag, you're it. <laughs> hey, look. Our big thrill is to munch down on somebody else's goodies. A big juicy bone. Wow. <laughs> well, see you later, guys. I'm gonna go see my sweetheart lady. What a babe. We rub noses and say hello. Hi. Hello, Frizzer. What do you want to do? Let's go over there and watch the ducks in the moonlight. And then we can go have some ice cream. Sure. Oh, look. Somebody left a picnic basket and a blanket so that we can have a midnight dinner. Are you going to finish that? No. Ain't she something? Well, too bad we had to end it early because my owner was coming home early in the morning. So I kissed my sweetheart goodnight. See ya. I quickly got into my doghouse as my owner pulled in the driveway. And I just sat there and did my good dog thing, wagging my tail, and I greeted him. Oh, I missed you so much, Frazier. What a weekend. I wish it would never end. I wonder when my owner's gonna go away again. Next time I go on vacation, I'm going to take you with me. Oh, no! I always like it when a story can teach me something. But what's even better is when that same story can entertain me and make me laugh. And that's what a group of writers did from Mrs. Bros to second grade class at King's Elementary. And their story entitled Chester the Crocodile. Once upon a time, there lived a crocodile named Chester who loved to eat candy. I love candy. I can't get enough of it. I ate it for breakfast. <sighs> Jelly beans. Oh, and for lunch, licorice. <laughs> and we mustn't forget dinner. Chocolate. <laughs> oh, and dessert. <laughs> Suddenly, he got a terrible toothache. Oh, no. Mom, every my teeth are killing me. Every one of them aches. I think you've been eating too much candy. I think it's now time for a trip to the dentist. Oh, no, not the dentist. Chester and his mom went to the dentist's office. Welcome to Dr. Bucky Bunnies. How may I help you? Oh, my son has a terrible toothache. I think he's eaten too much candy. Follow me. Chester climbed into the dentist chair and began to cry. <laughs> I ate too much candy. <sighs> oh, don't cry, Chester. Let me take a look. Oh, this doesn't look good. You're going to have to have all your teeth taken out. Because you ate too much candy. So the dentist pulled all of Chester's teeth out. Now remember, Chester, when your teeth grow back, don't eat so much candy. Eat more fruit and always brush your teeth. Don't worry, I'll eat right from now on. And from that day on, Chester never ate candy again. And all of his teeth did grow back. 
Now the moral of the story is... Don't eat too much candy. And always brush your teeth. Next! And they lived happily ever after. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder what, Sabrina? I wonder what really happens when these fairy tales end. I'd like to see a well-known story like Goldilocks and the Three Bears retold from a different point of view. Well, you're in luck. That's what we'll see in Braddy Locks, a story written by sixth grader Meredith Sutton from Lowell Elementary. Once upon a time, there lived three bears. Yes, the Papa Bear, the Mama Bear, and of course, the Baby Bear. Oh, this porridge is too hot. Why don't we go for a walk while it cools off? So they went for a walk. And no sooner had they left than a bratty little girl named Bratty Locks came upon the cottage. Ha! Everyone thinks I'm my twin sister Goldilocks, but I ain't. I'm Bratty Locks, and I'm here to show those bears what I'm made of. Now Goldilocks would have knocked on the door, but... I ain't her. hi -ya! So she kicked the door open and went inside. Porridge and me without a meal for at least an hour. <laughs> Ooh, this one's too hot. Ooh, this one's too cold. Hmm, this one's just right. <sighs> My sister would eat this junk, but I'm gonna put it down the garbage disposal. And that's what she did. Done. Now to rearrange the living room furniture. <laughs> uh, this one's too big. I'll never get it out the window. Uh, this one's too soft. It won't even break. Ah, this one's just right. Braddy Locks picked up the baby bear's chair and threw it out the window, and it broke. <laughs> I wonder what's over there. Let's go see. Braddy Locks ran to the three beds. She jumped on the big one, messed the middle one up, and threw the bedspread of the little one on the floor. <laughs> now, to wait for those silly little bears to come home. The three unsuspecting bears came home from their walk. Well, Goldie, what are you doing here? I'm not Goldilocks, I'm Braddy Locks. <gasps> And I'm here to pay you back for mistaking me for my goody two-shoes sister. Look, she dumped all her food in the sink. And she threw my chair out the window. And I messed up your beds, too. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Braddy Locks. We were all done with our porridge. Oh, and we're getting a new set of chairs and table today. And today's the day we change the sheets. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Braddy, Braddy Locks. Braddy Locks was amazed and began to cry. It's not fair! It's not fair! <laughs> Works every time! Right away! Well, we hope you enjoyed watching the stories today as much as we did presenting them. I can't wait to see what you write for our next show. That's right! You've already shown us what good writers you are, but we need a lot more stories for future shows. Send us more adventure stories, more funny stories, more romantic stories, and poems. More mystery. It doesn't really matter what kind of stories you write, just let your imaginations run free. And remember, right, right away! away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our program, call the Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 for more information. Pick up a paper and pen right away. Right away. Don't know just how to begin right away. Right away. Just let the ideas flow. Right away, right away, don't worry about where they'll go, 
right away. Right away. Let's have some fun. Now we began. Let's keep on riding cause it's an exciting kind of way. that I'm waiting for my favorite time of year winter with the snow lots of snow I love snow well since you can't wait for winter I found a great story where the author puts you in a wintry mood with his main character a lonely snowman this next story comes to us from Doyle Bonaduce a first grader from Town Point Elementary watch with us as we meet a very interesting character in Fluffy the snowman once upon a time, there was a snowman who stood all alone in the snow. He was a lonely snowman. I'm so lonely. I wish I had somebody to play with. <gasps> Look, children. Maybe they'll let me play with them. Can I play with you? Hi. Yeah, yeah sure! sure. <laughs> Fluffy played with his new friends until nighttime when they all went home to go to sleep. Bye, Bye Fluffy. Fluffy! See you tomorrow! Bye! And left Fluffy all alone again. Bye, kids. It's great to have friends. <laughs> the next morning, the sun was shining. Hi, Mr. Sun. I can't wait for my new friends to come out. Yeah. Cool. Ugh. It's sure getting warm. <laughs> Finally, the children came out to play with Fluffy. But Fluffy wasn't there. What? Will he come back next year? <laughs> I'm sure he will. <laughs> Here, fishy. Here's some food. <laughs> You know, when I look at my fish in there swimming all by himself, I wonder what he's thinking. Is he happy? Is he sad? Maybe he'd even like a fish friend. <laughs> then I start thinking about all kinds of animals. Do they have feelings? Do they have love and loneliness? As a writer, when you give human emotions to animals, it's called personification. Oh boy, that's a big word. But it opens a whole world of creativity when you put your thoughts down on paper. Well, I guess my question about animals having human emotions is answered by Samantha Anderson from Harris Elementary in The Bunny That Cried. Dear diary, I am a bunny. A bunny who cries out, I want a friend. But the only animals that come to visit me are worms. <laughs> All they ever ask is... Got any dirt? And all they ever want to do is play slime around the rosy. 
Slime, slime around the rosy. We're slimy and we're nosy. Dirt clots, dirt clots. We all crawl down. So I cry out, attention, please. I'm lonely. Rabbits only. How rude. Boring. Let's go. Okay. That's when I heard something in the cabbage garden. Who's out there? Don't hurt me, please. But that's when I noticed that there were two bunny ears just like mine. It was a new bunny friend I've been waiting for. Then we both yelled, Hey world, I've got a friend now. And so now I'll close, dear diary. Because I had to play with my new friend. Story. Oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Enough of that crying stuff. Our next story takes place where men are men and cows are cows and mountains are mountains. Joe, and... come on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just really excited about this next story. Watch what happens when two authors come together and make one great adventure story. It comes to us from kindergartner Charles Berryman and fourth grader Ainsley Stewart from Elps Road School. Now let's watch Wild Wyoming. Yeehaw! Hi, I'm William, and this is my friend Ainsley. We're going to Wyoming for our summer vacation to study the Wild West. Right, Ainsley? Right, and I sure hope it's wild. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. On our plane ride, we went through a thunderstorm, and it was pretty rough. Finally, we got to Wyoming, and my Uncle Bill was waiting for us to take us to his house. Well, kids, it's good to have you here. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll go exploring. Come on, let's go home. <laughs> While we were unpacking, we found something. Hey, what's that under the bed? Look, it's a treasure map. I wonder if it's real. Let's ask Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill! Uncle Bill! Yep. Look, we found a map. <gasps> This is a real treasure map. And do you know how I know? How? Well, it says real treasure map right there. <laughs> Come on, let's go find some treasure. Yeah. <laughs> we saddled up on some horses and rode on and on until we found a good place for a campsite. Lucky for us, Uncle Bill brought a cellular phone to call the weatherman to see what the weather would be like. Well, kids, there's a sandstorm on the way. But don't worry. We're going to be safe. <laughs> now go to sleep. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. The next day, we rode following the map when suddenly we found two kids that were lost. Help! Help! We got lost in the sandstorm. And yeah, we can't find our way back. Please help us. Oh, well, of course. Hey, hey, we're looking for treasure. Come on with us. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> Let's look on the map, Uncle Bill, to find our treasure. Now look, it says, according to this map, yeah, yeah. that the gold should be right over there. In that gold mine. Yeah. Right where that big, nasty bull is standing. <laughs> well, don't worry, kids. <laughs> oh, I'll distract him while, while you go in the mine. <laughs> <laughs> Christy and I ran ahead, but we tripped. Luckily, we landed right on a pile of gold. We grabbed all we could and ran back to show Uncle Bill and the others. Yes, it is stay away, you nasty bull! Uncle Bill, <laughs> look! We found gold! Is it real, Uncle Bill? Hey, let me see. I'll taste it. 
<laughs> that ain't real gold, it's fool's gold. Aww. Hey, Brett's all right. We had a mighty fine adventure, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go home and have ourselves a barbecue. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what to order. Everything looks so good. There are so many choices. I could get that. Yes, no. <sighs> oh, or maybe that. You know, the same thing happens to me when I'm writing a story. I have so many ideas, I can't decide which one's the best. This happens to everybody when they write, but you have to make a choice. Fifth grader Greg Hernandez from Washington Elementary sure does in his poem entitled Pizza. Welcome, totally excellent dudes, to Pizza City, yeah. Can I, like, take your orders? I would like a pizza, please, with lots and lots and lots of cheese. Give me all you got of ham and lots and lots and lots of Spam. Olives, sausage, peppers, too. Tomatoes? Well, just a few. Give me tons of anchovies and put them underneath the cheese. Give me all you've got of sauce. I don't care how much it costs. Now, put on some pepperoni, and we don't want no stinking bologna. Pineapple will top it all. Eating it will be a ball. Whee! Don't forget, Canadian bacon. Sorry, dudes, but it's all taken. What? Whoa, dudes. Just kidding. Oh, pizza. The end. And now, welcome to another spine-tingling Tales from the Script. <laughs> Hello, my little ghoul and ghoulettes. There's nothing I like more than a Halloween story full of fright. Ooh, and so to see. <laughs> I found a terrifyingly scary story that takes place at a fun little Halloween party where the guests may not be as they seem. It comes from third grader Julie Chen of Handy Elementary. <laughs> now let's watch as anything can happen in the Halloween mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Vinnie Valvano was at a costume party on Halloween night. Everyone was dancing and having a great time. Hey, Betsy. Huh? Who's that that dinosaur costume? I don't know. Look how he danced. <laughs> Soon the party was over and everyone went home. Everyone, that is, except Bye. for Vinnie oh, and the dinosaur. Guys, oh, I guess my dad forgot to pick me up. Better walk home now. Vinny began to walk home the only way he could, down a dark, dreary dirt road where the trees seemed to be staring at him. Psst. Hey, kid! You one of those kids that likes toothpicks? Kid, you don't like log cabins, do you? Betty does. Betty does. Betty does. Betty does. Betty does. Betty does. Vinny continued to walk down the road, but stopped suddenly. He heard footsteps behind him. He turned around to look and saw the dinosaur from the party. The dinosaur was coming closer and closer. Vinny started running until he heard the dinosaur call out. Vinny! Vinny! He knows my name! The dinosaur took off his head and said, Vinny, what were you running for? I wanted to drive you home. 
Dad? What are you doing in that dinosaur costume? Oh, Betsy's parents called and asked me to help chaperone her party. Neat costume, huh? Yeah. I really scared you. I'm sorry, son. Oh, me? Scared? I'm not scared of anything. Ooh. Let's go home, son. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know about you, but I'll never go walking alone on Halloween night again. <laughs> Might run into something extinct. Well, I've got to go now, but keep those ghoulishly good stories coming my way. And see you next time on Tales from the Script. <laughs> Do you ever wonder if there's life on other planets? I do. And I wonder if we could be friends with other beings. After all, love and friendship is what makes the world, or worlds, go round. And writing your feelings down on paper is a great way of expressing them with other people. And that's exactly what this next author did. First grader Brandon Walker from Midland School explores his feelings in his wonderful story, The Boy and the Alien. Once there was a boy named Brandon who loved to play his harmonica. One day, as he was walking, he found a box. Wow, look. Someone must have lost their box. Oh well, I'll take it home with me. What Brandon didn't know was that this was a magic box. If you drew on it, it would change into the picture you drew. I think I'll draw a spaceship on the side of this box. Because I love space. We have main engine ignition. Suddenly, Brandon's room turned into a spaceship, and he flew up to the planet Pluto. This is amazing. I'm going to go explore. Brandon was walking when suddenly he saw an alien. At first, Brandon was frightened. Don't hurt me. But Brandon soon learned that the alien was friendly. Thanks. I'm Brandon. I'm from Earth. Easy. Friend. The alien showed Brandon an unusual necklace she had. That's neat. Here, you can have it. When you want to talk to me, just wear it. We can talk anytime. Here, I want you to have my harmonica. Whenever you play it, I'll hear the music. They hugged and said goodbye. Then Brandon went back home. Bye, Izzy. Bye. Back at home, Brandon often used the special necklace to talk to Izzy, and Izzy would play music on the harmonica for Brandon to hear. I learned that wherever I go, I can make new friends, even if we are different. And Brandon and Izzy remain friends forever. The end. Oh, hi. I just finished the ending on the story I wrote for the third time. I can't make up my mind if my ending should be happy or sad or, or both. Most endings are happily ever after, but I like it when a writer can add a new twist to an old story and surprise you with a very unusual ending. Chris Jackson from Lakeview School does just that when he takes us to the wacky kingdom of the Bossy Princess. Once upon a time, there lived a princess. Now she was very pretty, but she was also very bossy. Where's my new dress? Where's my lunch? Why won't they hurry, hurry, hurry? When she did not get what she wanted, she would have a fit and scream. This made her father, the king, very unhappy. 
Why must my daughter be so bossy? I wish she'd be more appreciative of what she has. I know. Perhaps seeing the handsome prince will cheer her up. Good morning, sweet princess. How lovely you look today. Really? <gasps> Get me my mirror. No, not that one. That one. Yeah, that one right there. Give it to me. Please, get out of my light. Meanwhile, in the enchanted part of the forest, the evil witch was planning to take over the kingdom. There! The ransom note is finished. In order to take over the kingdom, I will kidnap the princess. <laughs> the king will be so upset, he will give me the kingdom in exchange for his daughter. Then, I will be the most powerful witch in the kingdom. Now for a disguise. And so the witch disguised herself as a fortune teller and went to the castle. Meanwhile, at the castle, the posse princess sat reading her favorite book. Hello, pretty princess. Have your fortune told? Yes, sit down. Here you go. Start with my lifeline. No, start with my love line. You will take a short journey with a stranger. Be in danger. And I will take over the kingdom. The witch kidnapped the princess and left a ransom note. Ah! The prince heard the scream and came running. But the princess was gone. He saw a note and gave it to the king. Your Highness, the evil witch has kidnapped the princess. We must save her. We must? Oh, of course, we must. Yes, yes, go save her, my son. Oh, all right, I'll go too. <laughs> Back at the witch's castle, the princess was bossing the evil witch around. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I'm thirsty. I want some water. And none of this tap stuff. I want bottled water. And listen, you have to untie these ropes. I'm swelling up like a balloon. Oh, please stop it. You just can't take it anymore. Just go home. The witch finally let the princess go. Princess, there you are. I looked everywhere for you. Everybody's been so worried about you. They have? Uh, yes, we have. <laughs> will you marry me? Yes, you will. <laughs> yes, but first, there are a few rules we'll have to talk about before we get married. And so the princess and the prince lived unhappily ever after. Oh, no, they didn't. Ibby Bobby Aussie. This princess is no longer bossy. And like I was saying, I think you're wonderful. And I promise never to be bossy again. Hey there, uh, handsome. Wanna go to a wedding? Who says fairy tales don't have happy endings? And that is how they all lived happily ever after. The Bossy Princess, the end. Now, I will save the world from the evil powers beyond. Its rays are great, but I can hold them back. Oh, hi. I was just pretending I'm a superhero. Sometimes I like to pretend I'm a cowgirl. Well, howdy, partner. Sometimes I like to pretend I'm a nurse. Open wide, please. With my imagination, I can be anything or anyone I want to be. And it helps in my creative writing, too. There are no limitations on who or what I write about. And there's no limitations in plot or character in this next story. It's written by sixth grader Ryan Hammond from Wildemar Elementary. Watch as two unlikely superheroes save the day in Obtuse Man and Square Boy. Mardi Gras and Ed Cetera dreamed of being superheroes. Gosh, if only I could fly like Superman. Yeah. And if only I had the strength of the Incredible Hulk. This dream 
unfortunately became a reality when a terrible mistake occurred. Arch enemy of the world, really naughty man, had just completed his experiment and was ready to test it. My experiment is ready. I've created the ultimate weapon to take over the whole world. Thunder clouds filled with stupid rain. When it rains on everybody, they will become stupid. And I will be ruler over all that is stupid. Oh, bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> really Naughty Man released the clouds, but they only gathered over Marty and Ed's house. It rained and rained on Marty and Ed, and it made them huh? stupid. But it also turned them into the traditional comic book heroes with X-ray vision. So that's where that sock went. Super strength. And vulnerability to their enemy. The ability to fly. And the greatest power of all. Knowing what's on TV without turning it on. I will be obtuse man. And my job will be to watch TV with my trusty channel changer. And I will be Square Boy. And as your faithful sidekick, I will work at Burger World to ensure the public quality fast food. Really Naughty Man saw that his plan had not worked, and he was mad. This isn't gonna stop me. I'm still gonna take over the world, and I know just how to do it. As Obtuse Man watched TV, a news flash came on. This just in. Really Naughty Man has just announced from his mega plane that he is taking over the world and no one can stop him. Not even Obtuse Man or Square Boy. So don't even try. Everyone, please, do not panic. Do not panic. Everything is under control! <laughs> oh no! I must save the world! Thank goodness for my trusty VCR. Now I won't miss Gilligan's Island. And now to get Square Boy! Welcome to Burger World. May I help you? I'm sorry, you'll have to speak up. I can't understand a word that you are saying. And Square Boy! Come, really naughty man is at it again. It's time to save the world. Yes! Hello world, this is really naughty man in my mega play. And I'm gonna drop more stupid rain if you don't give up. Your days of naughtiness are over. Whoa, watch the propeller square boy. Oh. You've been a very naughty man. Now give up. You're surrounded. Never. Never. Uh-oh. I've run out of gas. All right, I surrender. Oh, you're just too much for me. <laughs> Later that day, Obtuse Man and Square Boy gave really naughty man his punishment. You must write, I will not try to conquer the world. 2,000 times. Uh, done. And I've learned a valuable lesson. What's that? Never try to conquer the world on a half a tank of gas. I'm out of here. See ya. And so, Marty and Ed truly were superheroes. And they had saved the day. For now. <laughs> Sweep. Right away! Thanks everyone for a wonderful birthday party and for all my great presents. And thanks to all of you for the stories you submitted. And your stories are like presents to us because with each one we read, we learn something new about you and about ourselves. Through writing, we can reach across the miles to let others know how we live and feel and just how different and similar we are. 
So keep sending us those wonderful stories so we can share them with everyone. Come on, everybody, let's take a group shot so we'll always remember this day. Yeah! yeah. All right, everyone, smile right, right away. away. If you'd like more information on how to get your students' writings performed on right away, call the Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499. I write another story, poem or adventure tale When I'm using my imagination I know I will never fail It's fun making up a superhero Super Chipmunk saves the day! Here's a mystery to keep you guessing I just love to write away Let's have some fun, now we begun just keep on writing cause it's so exciting Right away Right away Right away Right away Paper and pen, right away. Right away. Don't know just how to begin. Right away. Right away. Just let the ideas flow. Right away. Right away. Don't worry about where they'll go. Right away. Right away. Let's have some fun. Now, now we begin. Just keep on writing, cause it's so exciting. Right away. Let's have some fun, now we've begun Just keep on riding cause it's so exciting Right away, right away It's a lion, the king of the jungle. Uh, my favorite yeah. animal. I got it for you. Uh, we. We got it for you? What's this? Oh, that's a story that I, we, read that made us decide to bite that neat lion. It tells all about teamwork and how it can solve any problem. And, and how being honest with your friends can make everything turn out all right in the end. It comes to us from second grader Desiree Hernandez from Alameda Elementary in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Now let's all listen to the roar of the proud and fearless lion. There once lived a proud and fearless lion. Yeah, I ain't afraid of nothing. Not a bird nor a mouse. <laughs> now the problem was that every night at the same time, he would go into the jungle and roar. This made the other animals really mad because his roaring woke them up. So the angry animals held a meeting to decide how to stop the lion from roaring. I'm so tired. I can't get any sleep. Me either. And I need my beauty rest. You're right. You're both right. I think we should make the lion move away. <gasps> Too dangerous. <sighs> I think we should scare him away. Uh, Too, Too stupid. stupid. I've got it. Why don't we just ask him to stop roaring at night? Perfect. Perfect. Mr. Lion. We have come to ask you to please stop roaring at night. You're keeping all of the animals of the jungle awake. I am? Yeah, and furthermore, you... <laughs> <laughs> well, why did you just say so? I'm sorry. 
<laughs> hey, tell you what, from now on, I'll only roar in the morning. And so from that day on, the animals got their sleep. And the fearless lion roared at the beginning of each day. to wake the animals up. Hey, Brian. I know how much you love to travel. So, I got you a globe. Hey. So you can see all the places that you're going to. Thanks. Yeah. This is perfect. <laughs> wow, is it amazing how big the Earth seems? Yeah. When you look at it like this? Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys, look, I got a globe. The Earth may seem big to you and me. There's so much to see. The Earth is important to us because it's where we live, and that's why we need to take very good care of it. I want to share this story with you, written by first grader Jasmine Walker from Town Point Elementary. Let's see how Jasmine describes all the reasons she loves the Earth. I feel good because I live on the Earth. The Earth has gravity. The Earth is blue and green. The Earth has air. The Earth has farms. The Earth has schools. The Earth has trees. And best of all, the Earth has people on it. The Earth. The end. That was great. Hi, everybody. Hey. Oh, hi. hi. Hey, I thought this was a party. I know I'm late, but come on, let's party hardy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys, where are you going? Hey, Brian, I brought you a present. Do I know you? Yes, remember? I'm the brave individual that saved you when you went skateboarding out of control at a wind velocity much too fast for your body type. <laughs> I do remember you now. You saved my life. <laughs> Thanks, guy. No problemo. <laughs> hey, look. I brought you this gift. This will help you express your wild side, but be on a safer side, too. Wow. Thanks a lot. Look, everyone. A boogie board. Cowabunga. I bet he never expected to get such a rad gift from someone like me. When you create interesting characters like myself, you can put them in all kinds of unlikely situations. <laughs> and that makes your story so much more fun. That's exactly what our next author did. Created a unique character that becomes a very unlikely hero. It comes from fifth grader James R. Mungo of Linda Vista Elementary School in Mission Viejo. Let's meet the one, the only, Super Surf. Once upon a time, there was a surfer named Super Surf. No one knew his real name. Over the summer and spring, he surfed. During fall and winter, he drove an ice cream truck. One day, after surfing, he was at home eating when suddenly his surf alarm went off. Big trouble at the beach, Big Kahuna. Oh no, trouble at the beach. I must go. When he got to the beach, he saw what the trouble was. Oh, it's a giant shark scaring people. Everyone get out of the water, because I'm going in. He jumped into the water and wrestled the shark until it swam away. Super Surf? Oh, no, <laughs> I mean your real name. Super Surf, okay? Oh, gotta go home to eat now. Oh, he's so big and strong, and he was looking at me! No way, he was looking at me! He was looking at me! He was looking at me! Me, me, me! Buy me a snow cone. <sighs> Whatever. Super Surf was eating pizza and watching TV. 
I'd like to buy a vowel pack. Oh, cool! Suddenly, the doorbell rang. Super Surf answered it. Yeah? Would you be interested in buying a vacuum? No. Yeah? Would you be interested in buying a vacuum? Weren't you just here, dude? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Suddenly, the surf alarm went off again. Big trouble at the beach, Big Kahuna. Oh no, not again. Back at the beach, Super Surf saw it. A beached whale. Sandy and Eunice tried to roll the whale back into the water, but they couldn't. Everyone back! I'll handle this. Oh, Super Surf, you saved the whale! Oh, you're so strong. Whatever. I'm hungry. Time for dinner. Bye, girls. And so Super Surf ate his dinner, read a book called The Sailor Dog, and went to bed. Oh, wow, little doggy dude. <laughs> Just another day for Super Surf. Hi, come on. One, one, one word. One word. Two, two syllables. syllables. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds like. Uh, drink. 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 Pour. Pouring. Pour. 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 Store. Pour. Uh, gore. Pour. Uh, four. Pour. 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 Um, Door. Door. Pour. Yes, Paul! Yeah. Oh. That's amazing! Because yeah. that's exactly what I got you for your birthday. I wrote you a poem. Oh, okay. Wow. And here's how it goes. Brian, oh Brian. I'm a writing and I'm a trying. To let you know I'm not lying. When I say you're cool, oh Brian. The end. <laughs> yeah! yeah. You know, it is tough to write the perfect poem to express how you feel. You have to have exactly the right words to let people know what you mean. I got the inspiration for my poem from an author who sent a wonderful one to us from Stacy Wynn from Lakeview School. So listen to her wonderful poem as we hear Good Night to All. Paul, I'm going to get you. Good night to the shining moon. Good night to the little raccoon. Good night to the squirrel in the trees. Oh, good night. Good night to the ants and the bees. Good night to the meadow's breeze. Good night to the deep blue seas. Good night to the dog in his house. Good night to the world, as quiet as a mouse. Good night to all. The end. I'm sorry, but I don't have a present for you. I had to make my science experiment perfect, and it took too much time. That's okay. The present doesn't matter. You're here, and that's what counts. And besides, getting good grades is important. Ow! You! Uh-oh. Well, it sure is important. You know, sometimes it's hard for us to decide what we should do. Play or study, eat or study, watch TV or study. The choices never end. But there's always time to play. I like to do my work first. That way, there's always plenty of time to do all sorts of fun things. I was reminded of this when I read the story by fourth grader Brad Sherwood from Villa Park Elementary. We can all learn a lesson from the test. Once there was a boy named Dan. Now Dan liked to skip homework and play baseball instead. Dan, is your homework done? Uh, yes, Mom. Dan loved baseball. He loved to watch it but he would never get his homework done. Oh, the game's on TV. I'll do this homework later. At school, 
Dan found out there was going to be a test. Okay, students, listen up. Today, we're going to have a test on everything we've learned this week. Now, the one who gets the highest score will win two tickets to the Giants game. Oh. And the chance to get their autographs. Oh, yeah. The Giants! I gotta win those tickets! I think I'm gonna win. I've been doing all my homework and studying really hard. Dan, you can't win. You never study. Whenever we ask you to go to study hall with us, you always say, no, I'd rather play baseball. You're right. I should have studied harder. Okay, students, now. Here, here, here. Let's begin. The next day, the students found out the test results. Okay, students. We have a winner. It's Paula <laughs> with a perfect 100. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations, Paula. It's time for recess. Congratulations, Paula. Have fun at the game. Yeah, guess what? My dad and I are going to the game, too. Oh, you know what, Dan? My dad can't go with me to the game because he's going to be out of town that week. So, you want to go with me? Would I? Sure. Okay, but only if you promise to go to study group with us and to try a lot harder. I promise. Okay. Dan had learned his lesson. He would never forget to do his homework again. And he would always do his best. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brian! Thank you! Happy <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how many candles did you put on this cake? I'm not that old. I know, but it's better to have too many candles than none at all. Have you ever been caught without candles? Like, let's say during a blackout, and you can't see at all? I have. And I remember the important thing is to stay calm and be prepared in an emergency. Third grader Mark Herman from Henry Elementary reminds us to stay calm in his thrilling story, The Storm. It was a Friday, a nice day until there was lots of clouds and heavy rainfall. The winds were strong. Uh, the weather's not good, Mom. Look! The winds blew off the Smith's garage door! Well, when are you coming home, dear? I don't know. The building next door got struck by lightning. Oh, just got hit again. Everybody has to stay inside. You and Mark aren't scared, are you? Oh, no, dear. Oh, no! The lights just went out. Look, I want you to go over to Grandma's and wait out the storm. I'll get there as soon as I can. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye, dear. We'll go to Grandma's house. Okay. It'll be fun. So, we went to Grandma's house and ate dinner. You call this a storm? Well, I remember the storm of 1890. We all had to walk 10 miles to school barefoot, tied together by a rope, with no coats and no umbrellas. Yeah, there we were, dodging cows and pigs and uprooted trees. And they were so cold that my ears, I couldn't even feel them anymore. But I was never afraid because I was prepared. I always carried my water, my flashlight, my trusty candles, and above all, my powdered eggs. Eat up! Come in! Oh. oh, there he is, the hunky power man! Hi, everyone. As you can see, the lights are back on, and it's safe to go outside. Are those powdered eggs? Yes! Finally, my dad arrived. Oh, Dad, you made it! Uh, were you scared? Oh, a little. Oh, we can go home now. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Grandma. And I'll always remember to have plenty of flashlights and candles. And don't forget the powdered eggs. Powdered eggs? <gasps> Our cable TV came back on and we were back to normal again. But none of us would ever forget the storm. The end.
I love to dance because it's a good way to express how you feel. Just look. You know, their dancing reminds me of a very creative story where the main character just can't stop dancing. It comes to us from second grader Tara Brecken of Rios Elementary in San Diego, California. Let's watch The Dancing Princess. Once upon a time, there lived a king, a queen, and a princess. The king and queen enjoyed a quiet life, but their daughter always danced. She danced when she was happy. She danced when she was sad. She danced all the time, and this drove the king and queen crazy. Daughter, you must stop dancing. You'll pass out. You'll get too thin. Look at your mother and I. We can dance. And we can stop. You see? Dance. Stop. Dance. Stop! So stop! Oh, Father, I can't stop dancing. I love it so! Well, this went on for a very long time until one day there came a knock at the door and in stepped a prince. The prince said, Stop dancing! The princess took one look at the prince and stopped dancing. You must be the dancing princess. Will you marry me? I will. And I promise to only dance again at our wedding. Now the king and queen were very happy. Where did you find him? In the yellow pages. Oh, you're so clever. And they all danced. Uh, uh, uh. They all lived happily ever after. The end. Oh, goodness. Oh. Too much sugar. I told them not to eat so much sugar. But would they listen to me? No, I'm just the caterer. I said try some carrot sticks. But no, and now look at the party. Moderation is the key when you eat candy. You can eat a little bit, but in moderation. I learned this important lesson from a fifth grader by the name of Colin Devane from Rock Courageous Elementary School in Fountain Valley, California. Come with us as we learn about moderation as we see Attack of the Ninja Junk Food. in the castle of Lord Ice Cream Sunday, his majesty shouted, I must take over Lord Loaf Milk's kingdom, steal his transmogrifier box, then I will turn his tofu man into a candy bar, and then I will turn Lord Loaf Bad Milk into a stick of butter. <laughs> but your majesty... What is it, my trusted psychic beef chucky bob? Lord Low Fat Milk's army is very powerful and could easily overpower us with his tofu man. I know that, you nutcase. That's why I have rounded up Neapolitan Ninja to fight for us. But your majesty, what if Lord Low Fat Milk's spy, baked unsalted sunflower seed, should overhear us and ruin all our plans? That's why I added butter to the bacon, doubled the glaze on the donuts, deep fried the potato chips, and triple the security. And I also changed the password. You mean the password cholesterol? Shh! Now to prepare. Yeah. Sunflower Seed Spy had been listening to it all. I better skedaddle back to Lord Low Fat Milk and tell him all I've heard. I've been spying on Lord Ice Cream Sunday. He's planning on attacking the castle at dawn. He's gonna try to steal the royal transmogrifier box and turn us all into candy bars and you, butter. And he's using Neapolitan Ninja. Have no fear, our arteries are clear. We'll be ready because I have a plan. Hello, testing, hello. Everyone in my kingdom, quick into your fridge. 
will turn up the heaters and melt any ice cream that comes our way. Now, Sunflower Seed Spy, go get our secret weapon, Tofu Man. Right, you're outside Lord Bullfat Milk's castle. Ooh, you can smell the skim milk. Makes me want to curdle. Ooh. All right, you big stinky gooey cavity causing ninja, attack! All right, Tofu Man. You must save the right of every person to have proper nutritious food when they want to. Don't do it for me. We'll do it for all the millions of toothless children out there who want to have healthy teeth and gums. Not to mention nice wastelands. <laughs> Go, save our kingdom. Never fear, Tofu is here. Neapolitan Ninja, do you give up? Never take this! <gasps> that was disgusting. Here, have these carrot sticks. you off with a maraschino cherry! What's that I feel? You have turned the heater on! I'm melting! I'm melting! What a world! What a world! <laughs> we lost, your majesty! The Neapolitan ninja is no more! Where will we go? What will we do? Well, you would probably be a doggy treat for some mangy mutt now, but I, I, I changed my ways. You can't make everyone like you, so I've decided to divide my kingdom up into three sections. Regular, low-fat, and fat-free ice creams, and then they'll like me. They'll really like me! Sire, we've won! Neapolitan Ninja is no more, and Lord Ice Cream Sunday has surrendered! Yes, there he goes. How can I ever thank you enough, Tofu Man? Glad to be of help, Your Highness. All it takes is a little fruit and a side of vegetables to make them see the errors of their ways. Carrot stick? Uh, thank you. And so the kingdom was saved. Wholesome food had triumphed over junk food once again. The end. Hey, we did it, you guys! Another great show. Thanks to all those wonderful writers out there who sent stories to us. You know, we appreciate every story you submit to us, and we read every single one of them, and it's really hard to choose what stories you're going to see each month. But we always get the job done. Thanks to you and a little bit of teamwork on our part. So be a part of our team. Keep sending us your stories, poems, and fairy tales so we can get a good workout. Together we can share our talents and our creativities and have a really good time doing it. Come on, everyone. I'll race you to the next show. Hi. On your mark, get set, right, right away. away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our show, call The Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 and we'll send you some information. Now every day I write another story, poem or adventure tale. When I'm using my imagination, I know I will never fail. It's fun making up a superhero. Super Chipmunk saves the day! Here's a mystery to keep you guessing. I just love to write away. Let's have some fun, now we've begun. Just keep on writing, cause it's so exciting. Right away. Right away. Right away. 
away Right away Don't know just how to begin Right away Right away Just let the ideas flow Right away Right away Don't worry about where they'll go Right away Right away Let's have some fun Now we began Just keep on riding Cause it's an exciting right away Let's have some fun, now we begun. Just keep on riding close, it's so exciting right away. Right away. Okay, okay, I know we're down 50 to zero. It's 10 below freezing out there. All our cheerleaders have gone home. And we have no more sports drink. Oh. But we can do it. Hey, why are you crying? I feel lost out there, coach. I can't catch the ball. Everyone's bored at me. I'm a failure. Yeah. No, you're not a failure. You hear me? You never a failure if you go out there and you try hard. Believe me, I know. Even the littlest animal in the forest isn't a failure if he tries hard. You can do anything you put your mind to. You know how I know that? How, Coach? Anna Cassiari, a first grader from Midland School, taught me this in her inspirational story, The Lost Bear. All right, go out there and do your best. Yeah! Once there was a bear, and she just loved roses. One day, she decided to go outside to look for some roses to pick. Oh, how I love roses! Their color, their fragrance. I must have some more roses. I know, I'll go find a rose garden and pick some for the house. But the little bear did not ask her mother for permission to go. She just walked out the door and down the dirt path, leaving her home behind. The little bear found some roses, and she picked them. She held the roses up to her nose and sniffed them, and suddenly she could fly high up into the sky. Meanwhile, the mama bear realized that the little bear was gone, and she was mad. The little bear flew over her house, and when the mama bear saw this, she said, You come down here right now! So the little bear landed and ran to her mother. Here, mama, I picked these flowers just for you. And guess what? If you sniff them, you can fly! Oh, well that's very nice, dear. But you have done a very bad thing. You should never leave without telling me. For that, you must be punished. You must stay home for 11 days and promise never to leave again without permission. I promise, Mama. And the little bear kept her promise and the magic roses, and they both lived happily ever after. of practicing this ice skating. All I do is practice. I get up at 5 in the morning and practice. Then I go to school. Then I come back here and practice. This is really boring. To be a good skater, you must practice. To be a good student, you must study. Yes, to you it may seem boring to twirl around ice in little skirt and when you fall down, the audience goes, oh. But you are very lucky to be able to do so much. I guess you're right, Madam Slinky. I have a great life with lots of friends, and I get to do all sorts of exciting things. Oh, yes. It's much better than it used to be in the old pioneer days when I was a girl. You know, she's right. I read this story about what life was really like in the pioneer days. It comes to us from fourth grader Katie Stahl. And let's all learn about a day in the life of a pioneer girl. And then we practice. <sighs> This is a story of a pioneer girl raised in the 1800s. Her name was Marta, and she and her family came to America from Sweden 
in 1852. They settled in Wisconsin and built a farm. They lived in a log cabin. Marta would milk the cows and feed the chickens in the morning. Then she and her family would have breakfast. After breakfast, she would walk to school with her brothers. In school, the children recited their lessons and studied arithmetic until lunchtime when they went out to play. They would play tag, ring around the rosies, and London bridges falling down. Then they would walk back home to the farm and feed the animals. Marta helped her mother bake pumpkin pies. Then they would all eat dinner. And then go to bed. And that's what it's like a day in the life of a pioneer girl. The end. All right, everyone. Today is the day we choose the new mascot for our baseball team. Yeah. Now, now, every team needs a good mascot to cheer them on. <laughs> now, you're all given numbers, so let the audition begin. <laughs> Number one is um, the cheering chicken. Go. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Uh, number two is the Goofy Gopher. Go! Oh, go team, go! I can dig it! I can dig it! Two points! Two points! Ten points! Go! Go! Uh, that was uh, very unusual. Uh, number three is uh, Daryl and Daryl, the two-headed cow. Go team, go! We utterly love you! Moo! <laughs> Oh, you're all very talented. Um, now, just give me a minute to think about it. Have you ever been in a predicament like this? Not knowing what animal to choose? Making choices are always difficult, even in writing. There are so many characters to write about, but eventually, you always pick the right characters and the story turns out great. Now, I know that's true because I just read a story that's all about choosing. It came to right away from two authors, fourth grader Mark Severo and kindergartner Corey Keeler of Alps Road School. They put their heads together to come up with the perfect solution in the pet. <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived a family. Hi, I'm April, and this is my brother, Crow. Howdy. <laughs> and me, I'm their mother. They were a happy family. Now one day, April and Crow decided to go for a walk in the forest. Be careful, kids! They walked on and on until suddenly, a ferocious bear popped out and scared the children. <laughs> Once back home, they told their mother what they had seen. We saw a bear! Well, what did this bear look like? It was big and furry, and it had huge claws. Its breath was disgusting. It smelled like Children, the... why don't you go back in the forest, catch that bear, and make him a pet? Oh, oh mother, mother, could we? Yes, children. So April and Crow captured the bear and made it their pet. All went well until the bear saw Toast for the first time. He ate it all, leaving none for the family. So they let him go. Months went by and the children were sad that they had no pet. So. April decided to go for a walk. She found the little cat. Oh, you're so cute. I'm going to call you Little Lena. You'll make a much better pet than a bear. 
little Lena was a better pet. That is, until she started throwing dead mice in the family's face. Would the family never get a pet? Then, Crow found a frog on the ground. Look everyone, a frog will make an excellent pet. What are those bumps all over your hands? Huh? <gasps> Warts! I'm sorry children, but I don't think we'll ever find the perfect pet. Crow caught a very nice dog. Look, Ma, a dog! The dog became the perfect pet, and they never let him go forever. He is the perfect pet! Next. Very nice. Next. Splendid. Next. Okay. Next. What's wrong? You have to dive in the pool like everyone else or you can't be on the team. I know, but, but it's so high up here. I can see Las Vegas. I'm scared. I might have a belly flop and hurt myself. My bathing suit might fall down. It's scary now, but trust me, you'll love it once you're in the water. No! You know, I know a perfect poem that'll make you want to swim forever. It comes to us from second grader Erica Basaraba from Henry School. You'll want to float on water once you hear my dream. I was sitting in my boat. For dessert, I would make a float. Thinking about going for a scuba dive, I wanted to catch some fish to fry. All of a sudden, the wind began to blow, and I didn't know where my little boat would go. I knew my life was in danger, and what was about to happen was even stranger. In the water I went, down, down, down. I didn't know where I was being sent. Then I saw it with my own two eyes. A big old shark was coming. What a surprise! I hid in the underwater sand and found a scuba diver's hand. I unburied the scuba diver. He looked like the Sandman who sprinkles sand in my eyes when I'm in dreamland. Then I woke up and started to scream, ah! <laughs> Until I realized it was all just a dream. <sighs> Come on, Paul! Jump on right in! See? All you have to do is try. All right, now, when I give you this signal, that means you throw a fastball. Right. All right, now I give you this signal, you throw a curveball. Got it. And when I do this, that means watch out, there's a bee near your head. All right, go out and get him, Tiger. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm really going to play baseball. But there's so much to remember. All the signals, concentration, rules of the game. It's just like writing a story. You have to use the rules of grammar when you write. And you have to stay really focused or you may strike out. I like stories that use imagery to make you feel like you're right there at the game. Third grader Doug Schaefer from Lakeview Elementary makes me feel like I'm right there behind home plate in baseball. It was the first day of baseball. I was up to bat and there was one out. It was the last inning and it was all up to me. All right, son. Now I know you can do it. Don't touch my cookie. Now, I know our star hitter slugger is injured, but the championship, not to mention my job, is on the line. Oh, and did I tell you? If we lose, we'll have to move the entire franchise to Alaska. No pressure, no pressure. Now go get him, son. 
I had to hit the ball hard. The pitcher started his windup. He pitched the ball and everyone screamed. I swung my bat and whack. The ball flew into left field. I was running around the bases. And slid into hell. I was safe. My coach tried to lift me up, and so did my whole team. We won 20 to 19. I felt so good. I knew you could do it, son. You're a hero. I love this game. Baseball, the end. All right. Now remember, to stay healthy, you got to eat from the four basic food groups. And they are... Grains, dairy products, meats, and burritos. No bruiser, not burritos. Think, think. Fruits and vegetables. Very good. Yeah, very good fruit and vegetable burritos. Whatever. A uh, coach, uh, I've been reading a lot about this eating right stuff, and I found a story that I'd like to share with all of you. Yeah, it comes to us from Carrie McTurk, a fifth grader from Linda Vista School. Find out what happens when you're too picky about what you eat in The Picky Pirates. Once upon a time, there were some pirates that sailed on a ship called the Jolly Sausage Dog. They were very picky pirates, especially about their food. Ah, me soap cut is too salty. And the ankles are swelled up. Arr, this fish is too fishy. It makes my breath smell foul. Ha. Yes. And me souffle is flat. You, you have, have a souffle? souffle? Uh -oh. Arr, arr. Arr. The captain had had enough and called for the cook. Cook! Cook! Yes, Captain? Hey, worthless cook. Can't you make anything we can eat? Well, of course I can, Captain. I can make carrot stew, carrot soup, carrot bread, carrot stew. Grrr, walk the plank, you swab. Now the little cook didn't want to die, so he tried to run away. But eventually he was caught. I've caught him, Captain. Yeah, you took your time. Walk the plank. <laughs> Not you, him! <laughs> All right. I'm hungry. What's for supper? Uh, nothing, Captain. We've got no cook. Five days went by, and the pirates were starving. I can't go on, Captain. I'm too hungry. Oh, me belly's as empty as... as... Uh. Somebody else cook. Can you cook? Guess not. Just as things looked their worse, the cook suddenly appeared. Captain! Captain, here! Uh, uh, here you go! Here you go! Yuck! This tastes like slime and it's cold! Oh! Uh, mine is too hot! Ours is just right! <laughs> and so, for five weeks, the pirates ate cold carrot soup, hot carrot soup, and just plain carrot soup. The pirates had learned a lesson. 
Always read the resume of a cook before you hire him. And be thankful for what you got, even if it's cold and slimy. Eat up, man! And the pirates never complained about food again. The end. Joe! Joe, are you listening up there? Yeah, coach. Now, now, listen, Joe. Playing a center in basketball means you need to run, guard, and above all, rebound, right? Right. Then why won't you steal the ball? Because stealing's bad, coach. Yes, Joe, stealing is bad. It hurts people. It's not good to take what doesn't belong to you. But when you're playing on a team, everybody gets a chance to play with the ball, right? Right. But stealing the ball is bad, coach. Is there any air up there? Uh, listen, I'm going to tell you a story that will show you the difference between stealing, which is bad, and stealing the ball. And then you'll know what the difference is. I like stories. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Listen, this story comes to us from second grader Janae Smith from Midland School. Listen as we find out how bad stealing really can be in The Princess. Once there lived a princess. No ordinary princess. She was pretty, smart, nice, friendly, and wonderful. Her name was Princess Jasmine, and she lived in a castle, like all princesses do. One night, while the princess was sleeping, two thieves snuck into the castle window and took all the jewels. Help me up! Help me up! Oh, honey, just be quiet. Get in here. So here we are. Where are the royal jewels? In the jewelry box, you fool. Now, there, go get them. Oh, they all belong to me, me, me. You mean we, we, we. Oh, whatever. Let's do the dance of the jewelry thieves. awoke. I just had the strangest dream. I dreamt the two thieves came in that window, stole my jewels, and then danced around the room like a couple of fools. <laughs> what a silly dream. And now, to see my jewels. <gasps> They're missing. Father, father. Uh, yes? My jewels. I put them right in that box right before I went to bed, and now they're gone! Oh, I told you a jewelry box wasn't safe, Jasmine. What will you do now? The only thing a sweet, wonderful, kind, nice princess can do in a situation like this, find those two dancing fools and make them pay! Meanwhile, at the thieves' hideout... Ten for me. One for you, <laughs> one for me, none for you. Wait a minute, you gave me one too many. Ah, oh, you're right. <laughs> With all these jewels, I'm the wealthiest man in the world, and I will take over the world. Me too. Oh, whatever. Okay, let's go buy some clothes for their new ill-gotten gains. Ooh, I like it when you use big words. <laughs> Princess Jasmine had followed the trail of gold from the castle to the hideout. She entered cautiously. Oh, there are my jewels. I have them back. Oh no, the thieves are coming. I must hide. I can't believe I forgot the rest of the jewels. Oh, they're missing. Did you steal them? Huh? No, I wouldn't do anything like that. Aha! Uh -huh. I've caught you both. 
What you have done is terrible. Almost as terrible as your dancing. You should never steal from someone. I was going to punish you. But if you're truly sorry, I'm sure my father can find you both jobs and you can become honest men once again. Okay. okay. And so, Princess Jasmine got her jewels back and the thieves learned their lesson and they all lived happily ever after. The end. So now, Joe, do you understand the difference between stealing and stealing the ball? Yes, but stealing's bad, Coach. <laughs> Coach? Coach? Come on. You can do it. All right. Come on. All right. Give yourselves a hand. Congratulations. You've just climbed the highest hill in California. You should all be very proud of yourselves. Oh, we are, we are. And it's all thanks to you. Oh, I never thought I could do anything like this. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. When do we eat? No, no. <laughs> you can see for miles and miles. And look at all those stars. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, just wonderful. Hey, when do we eat? Oh, for goodness sake. Come on, everybody. Let's eat. Yeah. Whew. Mountain climbing is exciting. Not only because do you use teamwork, but when you reach the top, everything takes on a different quality. When you're way above the ground, you see everything in a different light. A perfect example of this comes to us from first grader Frank C. Ware of Midland School. Watch what happens when three boys enter the treehouse. Once upon a time in a quiet town, there was a treehouse that three friends, Frank, Eric, and Anthony had built. Now, on this particular night, the three boys were in their treehouse looking out the window. Nothing ever happens in this town. Yes, we built this treehouse, but there's nothing exciting to see. Uh. Hey, guys, look at that! What they saw was a giant flying saucer coming right towards them. You guys, I think I saw two aliens in that spaceship. Yuck! We must find a way to send those aliens back to Jupiter for good and save our planet. And I thought nothing happens in this town. <laughs> Come on, let's go! Yes. We have landed on Earth. Our mission is a success. Not yet. Now, we must capture some Earthlings and take them back to our planet for experimentation. And if they will not come, then we will tickle them until they do. <laughs> we have to build a laser beam to send them back to Jupiter. Yeah, right. How are we going to do that? Well, for some time now, I've been thinking about creating a laser beam that won't hurt anybody. Wow! Okay, Mr. Smarty, how does it work? Like this. Wow! Okay, Mr. Wizkid, how do we use it? We aim it at the spaceship and send it back to Jupiter. Meanwhile, the aliens had left the spaceship to find humans. Why is the air so brown? Pollution. They must clean up the air. <laughs> Look, humans. Humans. <laughs> oh no, they saw us. Quick, into the treehouse. Come on. <laughs> with us, little boy. No way! If you will not come with us, we will tickle you! Yeah. <laughs> oh no, they've got Anthony. And they're tickling him. Oh, Anthony's got away. He's running into their spaceship and they're following them. Anthony just came out. Hit the laser beam now, Frank. 
Frank shot the laser beam, and the spaceship blasted up into the sky, all the way back to Jupiter. Yeah, it worked! <laughs> Tell you. Our mission is a failure. We have been blasted back to Jupiter. Not completely. After all, Earth is a strange planet. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, Frank. You saved my life. Your machine was amazing. I will never make fun of you again. It was nothing. But I don't think anybody would ever believe us if we told them what we saw from our treehouse.